Yeah, I've been doing these just to make them stand out and they're there. We need to use them. That's what? Yeah, and they're different. I hope you did.
Brown. So much. I'm gonna run up to the
members. If we could have members in their uh, seats so we can get started, please. Will the Sergeant of Arms please call us to order? Thank you. Uh, our chaplain of the day today is uh, Walter Brody, guest of uh, Councilman Harold Collins. All right. That's all that's about. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for everything, Father God. Continue to bless all our leaders. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless all these staff members, Father God. Bless everybody who's here, Father God. Bless all the businessmen, Father God. Bless our whole city, our state, our country, and all around the world in the mighty name of Jesus. And him to follow. Bless all the people who are in South Carolina, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Collins, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Typically, Mr. Brody is um, our chaplain at the end of our meetings. Um, but today, we got a call that um, our regular scheduled chaplain would not be here. And so God always provides a ram in the thicket. Amen. And so today we want to honor Mr. Brody because I'm not sure we've ever done that. Um, and so it would be fitting that this council honor Mr. Brody as his chaplain of the day and potentially of the year. And so I want to read into the record our official resolution honoring Mr. Brody today. Greetings be it hereby known that Walter Brody, in recognition of life of exemplary qualities, outstanding service to the city, and meritorious involvement in humanitarian affairs, particularly at the council, and demonstrated concern for governmental processes, has been appointed chaplain of the day by the Memphis City Council, and is hereby entitled to all the honors, rights, privileges, and prerogatives appertaining to the office and to the display of this wonderful certificate given under this seal the sixth day of October and it's signed Myron Lowry as chairman but we may get you councilman chairman to uh, to sign this as well uh, with my signature Harold Collins council member and so Mr. Brody some things we take for granted and so today we decided we want to honor you for what you do every day you stay here to the very end and to give us a departing prayer. And so we want to honor you with this certificate of appreciation and letting you know you're our chaplain and then giving you a, just a small token of appreciation for your service to us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilman Collins, and congratulations, and uh, thank you, Brother Brody. We, we do appreciate you. Um, Madam Clerk, please, uh, please call the roll. Council members Berlin Boyd, William Boyd, Joe Brown, Harold Collins, Kemp Conrad, Here. Alan Crone, Edmund Ford Jr., Janice Fullylove, Wanda Halbert, Reed Hetchpeth, Bill Morrison, Here. Jim Strickland, Myron Lowry. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple uh, items on the agenda uh, that are being held and one being dropped. Item one, Coughlin Drive, that will be held for six months. Uh, number Item one, the Coughlin Drive road closure. Item two, which is the uh, village lot subdivision 
is being held until December 1st. In then item 26, the taxi ordinance is being dropped. 26. Uh, who has read the minutes? Councilman Morrison. Mr. Chairman, I read the minutes and found them to be order, and I still move. It's been moved by Councilman Morrison, seconded by Councilman Crone. Seeing no discussion on this item, please cast your votes. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Okay. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Fully Love, abstained. Halbert, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Uh, Madam Comptroller, please call the order of the day. The order of the day will take us to item number two, a resolution, nope, actually it will take us to item number three, a resolution approving a special use permit located at 184 A.W. Willis Avenue on the northeast corner of A.W. Willis Avenue and 3rd Street containing 0.428 acre in an area currently governed by a vacant convenience store in the mixed-use zone in the Uptown District. Night number three is held also? Till 1020. Til 1020. So can we note that in the records as well? So we're going to item number four. Item four. Madam Secretary, is item number one, two, and three held? Three. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Item number four, a resolution that the City of Memphis approves Center City Revenue Finance Corporation using up to $10 million from the Pilot Extension Fund for the Loan to Downtown Parking Authority for the purpose of constructing a public parking facility as an integral part of the One Bill development. This resolution is sponsored by Executive Division. Councilwoman Halbert. Um, Mr. Chair, the committee met and recommended approval. I so move and maybe bringing this item back, Mr. Chair. Sorry, what was the second maybe part? Maybe bringing this item back. The committee has met and recommended approval. So I so move. Okay, it's been moved by Councilwoman Halbert and seconded by Councilman Berlin Boyd. Mr. Chair, can we get the administration to just give us a brief update on this because there are some economic development issues that are going to be kind of coming up soon, but just want them to give a brief update for the record. Okay. Any uh, one from the administration that can speak on this item? We can move it to the end of the agenda, the agenda Mr. Chair. Okay. Oh, oh. Mr. Morris. Uh, okay. <laughs> Councilman Halbert. Yes, can you give the council a follow-up about this item, please, this agenda item? Sure, I'd be happy to. Paul Morris, president of the Downtown Memphis Commission. And what we're asking you to do here by this resolution is approve my organization, the Center City Revenue Finance Corporation, using its capital fund to fund up to $10 million to build a garage at the corner of Beale Street and the river. This garage will help enable a $150 million private development called One Beale, which will include a residential tower, a four-star hotel tower, 
And the garage will also support the neighborhood, including Beale Street Landing, which desperately needs more parking, and other facilities with, along the, the riverfront. So we're asking you to approve our use of that capital fund. Our board has approved it, the uh, county commission has approved it, and both mayors have approved it, and so we're asking you to approve it as well. Mr. Chair, this is not the item that I was thinking about, but this item is approved and um, recommended by the committee. Councilman Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Morrison, uh, for the benefit of the public, uh, you want to mention where these funds, the source of these funds? Sure. So this fund is coming out of what's called our the CCRC's capital fund, which is called the Pilot Extension Fund. And these are payments made by particular commercial property owners in downtown Memphis to fund this capital fund that's then reinvested in downtown Memphis. Thanks, Al. Sure. Tell somebody be out on the street. Right. This is not general. Where the city find that money? City, these are downtown Memphis commission funds paid by downtown commercial property Separate owners. assessment on those properties. It's not the general assessment. It's rents paid by downtown commercial property owners, um, particular properties that are part of that fund. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Boyd. Seeing no further council members wish, wishing to uh, discuss this issue, please cast your vote. Please, don't reveal the vote, please. Councilman Collins. Mr. Morrison, yes, sir. We, were, we were just asking a question in general. At the end of the day, who's going to own the garage? The garage will be owned by the Center City Revenue Finance Corporation, leased to the Downtown Parking Authority, which will then lease it to the owners of the One Beal Project to manage for us and build for us. So if there is a construction overrun with this project, that construction overrun will fall upon the private uh, developers who are developing the garage for us. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Councilman Collins. Please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Hedgepeth, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Call the next item. Item number five is a resolution approving a special use permit located on the north side of Alice Avenue, plus or minus 422.32 feet east of the intersection with Alton Avenue containing 5.86 acres in the single family residential district. This resolution is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development, case number SUP 15-217. Councilman Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is the applicant present? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Sean Lee, the president of Porter Lee. And your address for the record, please. 868 North Manassas. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Are there any objectors to this application? Seeing none, Mr. Chairman, this item was held and heard in committee. It did receive a favorable recommendation. We do have OPD present, should any council member would like to see it. With that, I move it to the floor for consideration. Thank you, Councilman Collins. That's been moved by Councilman Collins, seconded by Berlin, Councilman Berlin Boyd. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all council members please cast your vote for item five. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Hedgepeth, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Please call the next item. 
Item number six is a resolution approving a plan development located on the southeast corner of McKee Road and Sedgwick Street, containing 0 0.37 acre, 6,117 square feet in the employment district. This resolution is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development, case number PD 15-314. Councilman Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is the applicant present? Yes. Your name and address for the record. Delanor Smith, Smith Building Design and Associates, 3831 Lakehurst Drive, Memphis, 3128. Thank you. Are there any objectives to this petition? Seeing none, Mr. Chairman, this item was held and heard in committee. Hey, I, let me finish and I'll give it to you. This item was held and heard in committee. It did receive a favorable recommendation. Um, we do have OPD present should any council member would like to see it. With that, I'll move it to the floor for consideration. Thank you, Councilman Collins. That's been moved by Councilman Collins and second by Councilman William Boyd. And we have uh, Councilman Halbert who would like to comment. Okay, I just wanted to double check the project, Mr. Chair. Can you say it again for the record? For the record, this is a planned development to reestablish a daycare or a group living facility or educational facility uh, in the, um, I guess, on the Key Road in Sedgwick, which is near Rains Haven Elementary School. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I thought it was a project that they're working on in District 4, and I wanted to make sure because we just had a meeting yesterday about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Halbert. Seeing no further uh, discussion on this item, please cast your vote for item six. Council members, please cast your votes for item number six. Thank you. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Hedgepeth, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. The item passes. Thank you. Our next item is item number seven, a joint ordinance amending the Memphis and Shelby County Unified Development Code as adopted by the City of Memphis on August 10, 2010, and by Shelby County on August 9, 2010, as amended, to revise and enhance the joint zoning and subdivision regulations as recommended by the Memphis and Shelby County Office of Planning and Development and the Land Use Control Board up for third and final reading. This ordinance is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development. Case number ZTA 15002 CC Ordinance Number 5600. Thank you. Councilman Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This item was held and heard in committee. It did receive a favorable recommendation. With that, I move it to the floor for consideration. Thank you. That's been moved by Councilman Collins, seconded by Councilwoman Full of Love. Seeing no discussion on this item, all council members, please. Oh, Mr. Whitehead. As amended, amended in committee. Sorry. As amended. Okay. Okay. Please cast your vote, council members. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Conrad, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Hedgepeth, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. The item passes. Item number eight is an ordinance rezoning the north side of Summer Avenue, plus or minus 225 feet west of Vaughn Avenue, containing 0 0.55 acre in the residential single family district up for third and final reading. This ordinance is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development. Case number Z15-102, ordinance number 5601. Thank you, Councilman Collins. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, is the applicant present?
Mr. Yes, he was here in committee. Um, Mr. Chairman, this item was held in committee of Mr. Um, Winchester um, with the Winchester Law Firm uh, was in committee to hear this. And so um, what we will do, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, is this. The committee heard this. We did approve this in committee, and I will move it for consideration before we approve the minutes um, in two weeks. We can have Mr. Winchester come by. He was here just a minute ago. So I'll move it to the floor if any council member want. Okay, they're going outside to call them. If you okay. want to hold it to the hills of the calendar, we'll see what happens. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman. Well, let's hear Councilman Strickland, did you? If they're holding. Let's just hold it to the hill of the meeting and give him time to come in. Is okay. That... Okay, please call the consent agenda. Item number nine on our consent agenda is an ordinance amending the Memphis and Shelby County Unified Development Code as adopted by the, Mem the City of Memphis on August 10th, 2010 and by Shelby County on August 9th, 2010 as amended to revise and enhance the joint zoning and subdivision regulations as recommended by the Memphis and Shelby County Office of Planning and Development and the Land Use Control Board. This text amendment affects all property within the city of Memphis and unincorporated Shelby County up for first reading. This ordinance is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development Case number ZTA 15-003CC, ordinance number 5603. Item number 10, ordinance rezoning the northeast corner of St. Jude Place and Danny Thomas overpass containing 4.88 acres in the HDR zoning district up for first reading. This ordinance is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development Case number Z15-105, ordinance number 5604. Item number 11, ordinance rezoning 148, 150, 155, and 156 North Tucker Street, containing 0848 acre in the RU3 zoning district, up for first reading. This ordinance is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development Case number Z15-106, ordinance number 5605. Item number 12 is up for second reading. This ordinance is sponsored by the Office of Planning and Development. Case number Z15-103, ordinance number 5602. Item number 13, notation from the Land Use Control Board that the following case was heard and a recommendation made requesting a date of public hearing for A, case number PD 15-321, Germantown Market Plan Development. The date of the public hearing suggested is October 20th, 2015. And Mr. Chairman, on our add-on, we have one additional consent agenda item, a resolution designating and empowering the Memphis Housing Authority to hold the statutorily mandated public hearing on the necessity of the adoption of the redevelopment plan for the Raleigh Springs Mall area, known as the Raleigh Springs Mall Urban Renewal Plan. This resolution is sponsored by Housing and Community Development. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our consent agenda. Thank you, Madam Comptroller. That's been moved by Councilman Collins, seconded by Councilman Berlin Boyd. Seeing no council members wishing to speak uh, on the consent agenda, please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Conrad, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Before we move to the fiscal consent agenda, let's go back to item eight. Yes, Mr. Chairman.
Are we prepared to read it again? No. Councilman Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is the applicant present, Mr. Winchester? Yes. Will you come to the microphone to give us your name and address for the record? I'm Rick Winchester, 6060 Poplar Avenue, Suite 295. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this item was held and heard in committee. It did receive a favorable recommendation. We do have OPD present, should any council member would like to see it. With that, I moved it to the floor for consideration. Thank you, Councilman Collins. It's been moved by Councilman Collins. It was seconded by Councilman William Boyd, and we have Councilman Strickland. I just got a quick question. I wasn't in committee and have not looked at this report. Can you just give a, a Reader's Digest version of your report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brian Barker is the Office of Planning and Development. This is a rezoning for two, two properties at the north side of Summer Avenue, just west of, of Vaughn Street. One property is used for dental office. The other is for some type of office. I think these properties were approved by the Board of Adjustment some time ago, late 70s, early 80s. The applicant is uh, now before you to rezone the property, to reclassify it to commercial mixed-use property. It is within a zoning, the commercial mixed-use district. It's adjacent to property in the commercial mixed-use district, and the Office of Planning and Development is recommending approval. There are no plans for demolition at this time. They merely uh, to transfer the property from uh, residential zoning to commercial zoning. It's residential now? It's zoning-wise? Uh, I believe one property is, is used for a dental office, and the other property <coughs> is uh, some other office use. I'm not real sure what that office use is. Let me ask Mr. Winch. It seems yeah. loud. Uh, there what are, are your What are your clients' plans for this property? There are There are two properties. One, one is the dental office. The other is vacant because my client really can't do anything with it. It's on Summer Avenue. It's surrounded by commercial uses. It's it, it, It's vacant because he can't rent it for residential purposes. And uh, as Mr. Baca said, the properties on both sides of these properties are are already zoned uh, CMU. Did y'all have a neighborhood meeting? Pardon? Did y'all have a neighborhood meeting? We did not. We, we sent out the notices and put up signs and had, I think. Did anyone send objection? No, sir. We did not receive any objection. We had, we filled a couple calls on this application. And once we explained to them what the uh, application was concerning, they had no problems with the application. My my memory is that it's commercial all, all the way around, isn't it? That's correct. It's 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 about two doors down from the, from the McDonald's car sale site, just east of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Strickland. Seeing no further discussion on this item, please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. The item passes. Before we call the fiscal Thank consent you. agenda, we've got a same night minutes request for item uh, 33. So, uh, with that objection, we can go ahead and call 33. And then we, there's also a same night minute request for item 32 which we just passed in the consent agenda, which was the public hearing uh, for Raleigh Springs Mall. So with that objection, please call item 33. Item number 33 is a resolution appropriating $175,000 in contract construction funded by GEO Bonds for Cloud 901 Teen Learning Lab and 8,300 square foot space in the Benjamin L. Hooks Central Library, CIP project number PK08034. This resolution is sponsored by Park Services. Councilman Boyd. Thank you, Chairman Conrad. The committee has met. We recommend approval, and I so move. 
Thank you, Councilman Boyd. It's been moved by Councilman Boyd, seconded by Councilman Ford. Seeing no council members wishing to speak on this item, please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Conrad, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Bully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Uh, Madam Comptroller, please call the fiscal consent agenda. Item number 14 is a resolution accepting a donation in the amount of $250 from South Main Association as awarded to the City of Memphis Police Department, South Main Station to support operational activities. This resolution is sponsored by Police Services. Item number 15 is a resolution accepting a donation in the amount of $100 from A1 Electrical Contractors as awarded to the City of Memphis Police Department to support police services rain precinct. This resolution is sponsored by police services. Item number 16 is a resolution accepting a donation in the amount of $100 from Sycamore View Hospitality LLC as awarded to the City of Memphis Police Department Appling Station to support operational activities. This resolution is sponsored by Police Services. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our fiscal consent agenda. Thank you. It's been moved by Councilman Ford, seconded by Councilman Morrison. Seeing no council members wish to speak on this item, please call the vote. Please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Halpert, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes and takes us to the MLGW fiscal consent. Item number 17 is a resolution approving change number one to contract number 11699, large diameter directional drilling with Memphis Road Boring Company Incorporated in the funded amount of $992,000. Item number 18 is a resolution awarding a contract to Sensit Technologies for the purchase of multiple gas detectors in the amount of $272,000 $680. Item number 19 is a resolution awarding a 36-month contract to Ruffin and Associates with, for concrete standards in the amount of $2,432,137. Item number 20 is a resolution approving contract number 11830 plumbing services to Owens Construction Services in the funded amount of $550,002. Item number 21 is a resolution awarding contract number 11750, flexible spending administrator to WageWorks Incorporated in the funded amount of $103,860. Item number 22 is a resolution approving change number six to contract number 11363, graphical user interface replacement software with Rocket Software in the funded amount of $11,018.20. Item number 23 is a resolution approving change number three to contract number 9943, graphics reporting software package with Allen Systems Group Incorporated ASG in the funded amount of $36,790.89. Item number 24 is a resolution approving change number five to contract number 10927, perpetual licensing agreement with Pitney Bowes Software Incorporated in the funded amount of $160,272. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our MLGW fiscal consent agenda. 
Mr. Chair, uh, committee has met, recommends approval. I so move. Thank you. That's been moved by Councilman Berlin Boyd, seconded by Councilman Morrison. Seeing no council members wishing to speak on this item, please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Bully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Call item 25. On our regular agenda, item number 25, appointments. Memphis and Shelby County Groundwater Quality Control Board, reappointment. Karen Blanks Ellis, Memphis and Shelby County Music Commission, appointment. Tiffany Collins, Memphis Stormwater Board, appoint, reappointment. Elizabeth Burks. Councilman Crum. Mr. Chairman, uh, committee. Mr. Chairman, the committee met. Recommend approval. I so move. Thank you. That's been moved by Councilman Crone, seconded by Councilman Morrison. Seeing no council members wishing to speak on these this item, please cast your vote for item 25. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Item number 26 has been dropped. That will take us to item number 27. A resolution amending the FY 2016 operating budget by approving the amendment to allocate the GASC loan repayment proceeds in the amount of $5,608,000 in annual installments of $1,194,009.92 and to appropriate the funds as advised. This resolution is sponsored by Housing and Community Development. Thank you. That's been moved by Councilman Morrison and seconded by Councilman uh, Berlin Boyd. <laughs> Councilman Collins. Mr. Britton. Will you, um, oh, I see. Uh, Ms. Singleton. I'm sorry. Get to that later. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, Director. How are you? Congratulations. Well, thank you. All right. Tell us what this is, please. Um, the city made a loan to the Great American Steamboat Company whenever they moved their headquarters and the American Queen boat here. That, that loan was funded partially through non-federal funds and through federal funds. The federal funds have all been repaid. This is the next portion of that loan that is to be repaid. We are receiving payments and we need to amend our budget so that we can accept those funds. So the city made a loan to the Great American Steamboat Company. Yes, sir. And now that loan is being, being repaid yes, by sir. the Great American Steamboat yes, Company. Yes, sir. And this resolution allows us to accept that money. Correct. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman Collins. Any other council members wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, please uh, cast your votes for item 27. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Halbert, yes. Fully Love, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad recused. That item passes. Item number. Mr. Chairman, you don't mind. Councilman Collins. 
Well, he gonna leave after that. <laughs> Do we know where would this money go back into the HCD fund yes, for federal yes, funds to be yes, held for another project? Or other eligible cost, yes, sir. Okay. Thank right. you very Thank much. You. All right. Thank you, Councilman Collins. Please call the next item. Item control. Item number twenty eight is a resolution accepting funding in the amount of fifty three thousand three hundred seventy eight dollars and seventy three cents from United Way of the Mid South through Memphis Library Foundation as reimbursement for the database manager's salary in the Link 211 Department of Memphis Public Library. This resolution is sponsored by Parks and Neighborhoods. Councilman Boyd. Thank you, Chairman Conrad and the committee has met. We recommend approval. I so move. Been moved by Councilman William Boyd and seconded by Councilman Berlin Boyd. Seeing no council members wishing to speak on this item, please cast your votes. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Halbert, yes. Hedgepeth, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. Uh, the administration has asked us to hold items 29 and 30. So noted until when, sir? Mr. Brindham, until what date? The uh, next meeting. Next meeting. Okay, thank next you. Meeting. Two weeks? Yes, ma'am. So noted, sir. Call item 31. <laughs> Item number 31 is a resolution amending the FY 2016 capital improvement budget by accepting grant funds in the amount of $430,074.80 from the Tennessee Department of Transportation, TDOT, and establishing an allocation in Walker Avenue Streetscape, Phase 2, project number PW04103 for construction reconstruction of sidewalks, lighting, landscaping along Walker Avenue. This resolution is sponsored by Public Works. Thank you. Councilman Hedgepeth. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Committee Matt recommends approval and I so move. That's been moved by Councilman Hedgepeth. It's been seconded by Councilman Strickland. Seeing no discussion on this item, please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes. Thank you, sir. Crone, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Hedgepeth, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. We'll go to Councilwoman Full Love for same night minutes. Thank you so very much, Ms. Chair. We have items number 32 and 33. Uh, for same night minutes, 32 is a resolution designating and empowering the Memphis Housing Authority to hold the statutorily mandated public hearing on the necessity of the adoption of the redevelopment plan for Wally Springs Mall 33 is a resolution approving $175,000 in contract construction funded by Geo Buns for Cloud 901 Teen Learning Lab. And I so move. And I so move. I move again. I'll tell you what. It's been moved by Councilman Fulov, seconded by Councilman Crone. Seeing no discussion on this item, please cast your vote. Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Collins, yes.
Prong, yes. Ford, yes. Fully Love, yes. Hedgepeth, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, yes. Chairman Conrad, yes. That item passes. We have uh, 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 a few appearance cards. First, uh, Minister Yahweh, you have four minutes. Next will be Kathy. Ox here. Donna Bohannon and then uh, Brother Brody will take us home here. Oh, is Lee, Co is Lee Cochran here? Yeah. Okay. You've given your time to Mr. Uh, Reverend yeah. Yahweh? Yeah. Minister Yahweh? Yeah. Okay. Minister Sakura A. A. Yahweh, 870 East Macklemore, 38106. It seems to me that the Mr. Strickland, of course, got away because this was basically centered around him, point of clarification. He made a statement uh, in terms of him running for mayor, and he said about the smart meters that he had a smart meter, and that, uh, of course, that seemed to imply if he's got a smart meter, that means he must know what he's doing, and he's not going to do anything to hurt anybody. Of course, I've been studying under Dr. Uh, David Carpenter, the University of Auburn, as it relates to uh, uh, epidemiology, one of the leading epidemiologists in the United States and the world. He's also co-editor of Bioinitiative 2012. And also I'm studying under the Academy of Environmental Medicine, and it tells a series of things which, in fact, that happens to people who have smart meters. Now, if he's going to tell me that he's running for mayor and he's got a smart meter, I have to ask the question. Uh, and, of course, we know that ignorance simply means you don't know. So I have to ask the question, is he ignorant or do he have a hidden agenda? Because now if he's ignorant, then undoubtedly then that he don't know what he's talking about, and uh, I can understand that. But now if he do know and do, that moves from ignorance to being stupid. Now I'm quite sure if he's going to be talking about people uh, being and, and uh, selecting him as mayor, that uh, we, he don't want people to be following a person who, in fact, is stupid and endangering their health. Number one, that's what the smart meter does. It endangers the health of the people. It jeopardizes their, their, their uh, safety as well as violates the Constitution. So automatically, those three things are already violations in the, in the beginning of what he has done. Thank you very much. Let the record so speak. Thank you, uh, Minister Yahweh. Uh, Ms. Oxier, and uh, we have Trudy, Trudy Stamps, okay, and, okay. I think six. Lee I had Cochran, two donations. So you have six, six minutes. <clears throat> Kathy Oxier, 10840, Monterey Forest Cove. Contract number 11776. It's here, embedded in my brain. Contract 11776. Memphis Light Gas and Waters contract with Elster Smart Meter Solutions. I will never forget that number. Never. No one that I know of outside of Memphis Light Gas and Water has received a full and complete copy except for Councilman Berlin Boyd. He told me that he received one copy at the last Memphis Light Gas and Water Committee meeting. But when I asked if he could obtain a copy for us, our citizens group, he demurred and waffled and said he had a really hard time getting a copy for himself. Chairman of the Memphis Light Gas and Water Committee. Okay, so, and said, he said, that all of you city council people would have to share that one copy. A $240 million contract. One stinking copy. Now, if we believe that, I got a bridge in Brooklyn I can sell you. It's outrageous. 
it's demeaning, and it's deceitful. We want one stinking full and complete copy of contract number 11776. One full and complete copy. The final contract, not the RFP, the final contract, 11776. If, if Memphis Lake Gaddison Water and you, the council, feel that this $300 million plus and growing project, I said $300 million and growing, growing, is so dang wonderful for us, the citizens. Dang was not my first choice of words. Then why the dang secrecy? Why can't receive the full and complete copy of contract number 11776? Another group requested a full and complete copy of contract number 11776. And they were told they would have to pay $10,000 to get a full and complete copy. One, $10,000 for one copy of contract number 11776. Does anybody not remember 1176 now? I think I've said it 10 times. Got that, Mr. Wade? 11776? Got it. And it is in mine forever also. Again, I say, what do they have to hide? Do you know? What do they have to hide? Why the secrecy? What is so dang wonderful about this program, or bad, that we can't get a copy of the contract? 11776. Have any of you read contract number 11776? I've got two honest council women. Yes, sir. You've read the full thing? Okay, well I have a question for you then. Section M137, M139, and M141 talk about what? This is based on the RFP section of questions of required features to fulfill this contract. But these items create a disconnect with the Memphis Light Gas and Water customers your constituents, because it shifts all communication about the smart meter program to a telecommunications center somewhere to be disclosed that's run by a subcontractor. Now, when a customer has a complaint, where can they get solutions? A call center somewhere on the globe? somewhere in the United States? Who knows? So, does this mean that Memphis Light Gas and Water is gonna pass the blame of all of this to Elster and Elster's subcontractor, which I know their name too? And does that mean they're gonna wash their hands of us, the customers? Us, the customers, and plausible deniability because they had nothing to do with the communications with the customers. Thank you very much. Read the damn contract. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Donna Bohannon, six minutes. Oh, Councilman uh, Berlin Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, since my name was called out a couple times um, referencing the contract um, and the comment that I made to you in committee room simply stated that I did receive a copy of the contract. However, if the general public want a copy of the contract, they have to pay $1 per page to receive a copy of the contract. 
I'm not the president of MLGW. I don't make up the rules. I'm just giving you the information that was given to me. And that was the information um, that I have to share. I'll be happy to bring my own paper and come down here and copy it. I have to take that up with MLGW. I'm just relaying the message that was given to me. And that's exactly what who, I who owns Who owns Memphis Light, Gas, and Water? I'm not getting into a debating match, but I'm just sharing the information with what was said to me. Thank you, Councilman Berlin Boyd. Donna Bohannon, you have a uh, name and address for the record, please, and you have six minutes. Donna Bohannon, 5343 CL Road, Memphis. The MLGW Board of Commissioners has passed a fee schedule in May of 2015. This is an outrageous fee schedule. And heads up to the council, this fee schedule will never, never come before this city council for approval. It only has to come from the MLGW Board of Commissioners. This is an outrageous fee schedule, which seems to be applied at will, and it's perpetrated on the customers at will. We know that this contract, 11776, is doing everything it can to hide from the customers and owners of Memphis Light, Gas, and Water the absolute truth of what's going on. A contract has not been provided for us. I've asked for it right here at this lectern. It has not come to me yet. And according to what Ms. Oxier said, she will supply the paper and we'll, you'll, we'll let you stand there and watch us copy it off. Actually, that contract is owned by us. This is an outrageous fee schedule. And it seems to be uh, appropriated so that it can be uh, perpetrated, and I use that word deliberately, perpetrated on the customer, us ratepayers of Memphis Light, Gas, and Water. We have three people, two sit on this council that are running for mayor, who will be the uh, sole contracting person that we get back to for any answers. And Mr. Collins and Mr. Strickland are those two people that sit on this city council. I'd like to see each one of you deliver one copy to me and one copy to Kathy Oxier. I want to read to you some of the fees that Memphis Light, Gas, and Water, which you don't get to vote on, by the way. This is what they're proposing for customers. MLGW, Schedule of Charges, Revised 520-2015. The electric smart meter charge, a trip charge of $20. Smart meter replacement cost, 91 for a total of 101. A gas meter service charge, a trip charge of $20. Smart meter replacement cost, $70.08. And a smart meter module replacement cost at 42 for a total of 132.08. Page 19 of the contract, water smart meter service charge, a trip charge is $20, smart meter replacement cost, $83.49, and a smart meter module replacement cost is $178.49. A potential total cost to remove uh, an accidentally installed meter for all three would be $311.57. Now keep in mind that we've been saying and reporting what the chairman, uh, president of Memphis Light, Gas, and Water, Jerry Collins, has told us in committee and in other places where we've met with them. If a smart meter is installed on your property without your knowledge or consent, then it can be removed at no cost. We're incurring costs here. They're uh, uh, outrageous, and it will not come before this council. Do we get it? It will not come before this council for approval. These are outrageous fees. These are outrageous fees. Think about the people that are having a hard time meeting their bills already, but further, but further. Attorney Wade, this, this can apply to you as well. Could be very expensive to correct someone's communication problems, and we know that problems do happen in communication from the president to the board to the city council. And heads up, folks. <laughs> We've got an election coming up. And even testing fees, are, we're going to be charged for testing fees to see if these darn meters work. We know they're not good. We know this, been telling you this for three years. 
uh, we need to put some of these people on a lie detector test and hook, you, hook them up right here so you can ask them questions and watch the needle go crazy. There is a, an electric te uh, meter test charge for the smart meter of 162. To make sure it's even running accurately, we have to pay for it. And we know these darn things don't run accurately. There's a gas meter test charge uh, residential for 99. There's a water meter test charge. Mr. Chairman, could you ask uh, Councilman Wade to please refrain from talking out loud? I'm trying to think while I talk. Please, may we have silence in the chamber. This test charge could also include trip fees of $20 per meter. And $20 may seem like nothing to you guys, but it's something to a lot of people living on a fixed income. And we have a lot of fixed income voters that are going to the polls on Thursday. These, these meters have to be dealt with, but I can tell you this, Memphis Light, Gas and Water Board of Commissioners voted on this fee. They were the determining body. It will never come before this city council for a vote. But somewhere it's in that contract that we have asked Mr. Berlin Boyd for. There are missing documents in this contract. We, the ratepayers, the owners and the employees, uh, the owners of Memphis Light, Gas, and Water, and the employees of this city council deserve that contract. And there seems to be an answer all the time for why we can't get direct contact and to read this contract. And I would bet my last dollar that there's not one of you, maybe one, sitting on this city council that's ever read the entire contract. And that includes the chairman, Burley and Boyd. Mr. Boyd, I hope that you can provide that contract. This, this fee schedule needs to be stopped, and the only way that we can stop this is not to vote this, uh, for, uh, this outrageous contract into existence. It needs to be examined before it goes further, and Thank that's you. the Memphis Light, Gas, and Water Smart Meter contract, and that number again is 11776 by Elster. Thank you, Ms. Bohannon. Uh, Councilman Berlin Boyd, do you want to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just hung up from uh, President Jerry Collins, who stated that the union actually was provided a copy of the contract, and he will see, based on our recommendation, if they can post this contract online so that individual will have an opportunity to go online and pull up the contract. So I just hung up from him a second ago, and those were the words that he just stated to me. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Boyd. Councilman Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to introduce to you all a young lady who's a student at Lamorne on College, journalism major. Uh, her teacher assigned her to come to our council session today, I guess because she was tardy or she just wasn't making a grade right. But um, I wanted her to just say hello uh, on the record and um, just speak to the council for a few seconds, if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Of course, you. Councilman Collins. Ms. D. Reed, D. Reed is her name. I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. My name is, he knows me as D, but my name is Dianisha Reed. I am a junior at Lamorno and College. We at Lamorne, Lamorne on College, we have a couple of issues. It's not just on our campus, but it's around the, the South Memphis area. We greatly love our South Memphis area. We participate in many community funded activities that we use out of our own pockets to support that area. Our biggest issue is the way that the ground is kept. And what we mean by ground, the way the streets are. The pavement of the streets are horrible. Down, I believe, the South Parkway in coming from off the expressway. 18 wheeler trucks are consistently coming through that area all day, every day. We see that in other areas, the roads are being repaved beautifully, but we have one middle street of the paved um, driving area where the middle patch is only repaved and not the whole area. We drive our cars every day to campus. Some stay on campus, I don't stay on campus, so I drive to campus. And my tires and my car cannot endure the 16,000 patches that are in the road every day. 
we look at our area as we say we love our area and there are plenty of abandoned areas that make our south memphis area look as the low property area because people in the areas stay in the low property and don't have as much funds does not mean it has to look like it doesn't have as much funds so we would like for you all as the city council if you all so love memphis to take care of one part of a city that does not get as much light shine as it's supposed to. It has as much history as any part of any other part of the city. So we would like for you all to take part and to re at least join in with Lemoyne and be able to make it look better than what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Fulop. Thank you so very much. I thank the young lady from Lemoyne Owen College, and that's certainly that's part of my district and something that I certainly will look into beginning tomorrow. And thank you so very much, young lady, for caring. I'd also <clears throat> just like to say to my colleagues that what has been espoused to us uh, by uh, Mrs. Bohannon and others certainly is something that we need to take heed to. I have, in fact, read part of the contract, thanks to Mrs. Bohannon. And it really is an eye opener that if these smart meters are passed on or forced on to uh, customers here, that they will be paying a, an enormous price for those smart meters. So, you know, before you go and vote yes on $240 million, I think there's a lot of questions that you should raise and you should ask. Number one, how are they going to get the money back? Uh, they're just not, you know, they're just going to say, well, we're going to spend $240 million. Well, how are you going to get it back? Well, the answer, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist, is that the ratepayers are going to end up paying that back and more. So please, when you get the opportunity, take time to read that contract and look at it very thoroughly and certainly with understanding. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman Fullove. Uh, Mr. Walter Brody. Good evening. My name is Walter Brody III. I stay at 4256 Leadbetter Cove, Memphis, Tennessee, 38109. Uh, I thank you for the award and the honor today. It's my pleasure to give you a prayer for the last past 12 years. But uh, let's just go in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, once again, I come to you with a humble heart to say thank you thank you lord father god continue bless all the city council members and all their family members father god continue bless all our leaders father god bless all everybody who's working behind the scene real real hard father god bless them and all them fa they family members father god bless everybody who voice their opinion today who keep constantly coming up here father god bless them and all they family members bless every man woman child in this city this state this country and all around the world in the mighty name of jesus amen thank you god okay move to adjourn uh, we'll see everybody on october 20th and good luck to everybody Except